Hey friends, Ash here with Jensen's with another fragrance review. Today we're going to be taking a look at this bad boy right here, Dolce & Gabbana, the one Eau de Parfum Intense. Yeah, my favorite type of fragrance, a flanker of a flanker, Eau de Parfum Intense. I did a first impression on this one not all that long ago. If you missed that first impression, I've actually had this for a few weeks now. Manny from Cascade Scents, which is another fragrance YouTube channel, actually sent this to me. Uh, he lives up in Canada, and this was available in Canada before it was available in the US. But as of this video, this fragrance is available all across the United States on websites like Macy's.com or, of course, inside your local stores. So if you're really interested in this one, you can go check it out in store, spray it on, see how it works for you, and if you really like it, pick it up. It will, of course, hit discounters, uh, but I couldn't tell you exactly when. Probably, I don't know, a month or two? That's a <laughs> completely wild guess out of left field, though. In this video, we'll check out the presentation, like always, and I'll also break this fragrance down for you guys, let you know what I think about it, and let you know whether I think you should check this one out or not. So without further ado, let's jump into this and check out the one Eau de Parfum Intense. As I said, guys, this is a flanker of a flanker. First, there was the one Eau de Toilette. Then there was the one Eau de Parfum. And then there were a lot of other fragrances actually before the one Eau de Parfum and after the one Eau de Parfum. But after the one Eau de Parfum, there was the one Eau de Parfum Intense, which is this one right here, of course. Now, a lot of times with fragrances, you'll have the Eau de Toilette, the original, and then you'll have the Eau de Parfum. And Sometimes the Eau de Parfum is actually not any stronger than the Eau de Toilette was. Actually, sometimes it's even weaker. And then a lot of times you'll have, like this one, the intense version of a fragrance. And then you also run into the same issue with the intense versions that sometimes they're actually not really all that intense. And uh, in a little bit, I'll get into whether this one, the Eau de Parfum Intense, is intense or not. First off, let's quickly check out the presentation on this fragrance. That way you'll know how it's gonna come in if you do buy this one. This has a slip cover. Now this was purchased at full retail from Hudson's Bay up in Canada. So it's completely legitimate, but it does have a slip cover. You don't see that very often. So this is the box and then this obviously fits over top of the box. So we'll take a quick look at the slip cover, I guess. There it is for Dolce & Gabbana, the one Eau de Parfum Intense. You have a nice little design on the front of the box and it wraps all the way around. You've got your ingredients here on the side and then there is the back, which actually looks like the front. And here is your box. It's very simple. It's just black and gold, Dolce & Gabbana, the one for men, Eau de Parfum Intense. And then you have your size down there at the bottom. There's nothing on the sides. You got the Dolce & Gabbana on the flap, which I'll show you in a moment, and the ingredients on the back with your badge code on the bottom. So there's a good look for you guys of the front of the box. There's nothing, again, on the sides or the top. You have your ingredients down here on the back and your badge code there at the bottom. And there is the flap where it says Dolce & Gabbana. And then your bottle is your typical Dolce & Gabbana, the one bottle style. This one is all black with gold accents. You can see through the bottle. If you hold it up to a light, you can see through there. So this is not the type of bottle where it's impossible to tell how much you have left in there. Uh, other than that, this is just your standard, the one bottle style. So there is a good look of the bottle for you guys. And then the bottom with your badge code information. Cap does click into place though. This is definitely not the type of bottle that you wanna pick up by the cap. I know that a lot of you out there do not pick up your bottles by the cap. and. That's good, you really probably shouldn't, but a lot of people out there do, including myself sometimes. And uh, this is the type of bottle that's very heavy. If you pick it up from the cap, you're likely to have it drop and potentially break if it's outside of your, uh, your cabinet when it does drop. I'll go ahead and waste a couple sprays for you guys here. I know a lot of you out there like to see how the atomizer works, but again, the same as any other Dolce & Gabbana The One. There we go, not bad. This one opens up very sweet and fresh. There's a noticeable green tinge in here, a slight green woody tinge, and that's gonna come from the cypress. The cypress to me is most noticeable in the opening. 
once you head through the mid and especially into the dry down, I don't really pick up Cypress at all. But in the opening, it is there. It's a little bit noticeable, but it's more in the background. It's not trying to force itself into the front of the fragrance. It's more uh, nuance. There's also cardamom off the top, which gives you that familiar, sweet, aromatic, spicy pop that it's really well known for. Cardamom is a note that people in general seem to love, and it's no different in this fragrance. It's very uh, mass appealing. There's also some fuzziness in the opening to the scent, and that's gonna be the cashmere. I picked the cashmere up right away. Technically, it's a note in the mid of the fragrance, but I pick it up in the opening very easily. The cashmere in the opening kind of works side by side with the cardamom. It's almost like fragrance white noise, the cashmere and It fills in all of the empty spots in the fragrance. So uh, that's the way that I pick up the cashmere in. I know that may not make a whole lot of sense, but when you smell it and you get that fuzziness and the type of depth that cashmere and brings, maybe it'll make a little more sense to you. It's like a sweet, sparkly, fuzzy muskiness, the cashmere and uh, once it hits the full dry down, which I'll talk about in a moment, the cashmere and switches up slightly, but that's how it comes across in the opening. Neroli is also a note in the top. The neroli here, to me, not super noticeable. It more so just adds a little bit of freshness off the top. Through the mid and into the dry down, the cashmere kind of tones down a little bit. That fuzzy aspect of the cashmere in the mid uh, kind of takes a step back, not quite as prominent in the mid. And then in the mid, you also pick up labdanum and benzoin, and they kind of work together. They give you a different kind of sweetness. In the opening, the sweetness is almost syrupy because it's just very uh, forward in the front of the fragrance. Once you head through the mid into the dry down, the benzoin and labdanum take more of like a slightly dusty, semi-resinous sort of sweetness, like a, like a resinous, almost vanilla. And that's how it is through the mid. It's not quite as in your face, the sweetness of the scent. It has more of an ambery kind of feeling, the sweetness. And then you also pick up leather as the fragrance heads into the dry down. But the leather here is more so just a little bit of smokiness. It's not like a true leather. It's not one of those hyper-masculine leathers or anything like that. I have to stretch my imagination a little bit and then I can think, okay, yeah, maybe it's a little bit of like this slightly smoky brown leather. I can picture it that way. Uh, but it is more like a, a slightly smoky, sterile leather. It's not one that's trying to be anything that pushes the boundaries or is hyper-masculine or anything like that. And there's also clary sage in there, but the clary sage more so just works in with the leather accord. So those two are kind of married at the hip, at least that's the way that I pick it up. There's also patchouli in here, but I don't really pick up very much patchouli. So that one, if anything, just kind of plays a supporting role. This is not a fragrance where it dries down and you go, oh yeah, there's a, a good amount of earthy patchouli or chocolatey patchouli or anything like that. I, I don't pick up much of it at all. I mentioned before the sweetness in the opening. This fragrance is sweet pretty much the entirety of the lifespan of the fragrance, but it's much more pronounced in the opening. Through the mid and into the dry down, there's some semi-sweetness. Again, that ambery sort of labdanum, benzoin mix, but it's not as in your face. It's not as forward as I mentioned before. So while this is a sweet fragrance all the way through to the dry down, it's much more, I guess, palatable, you would say, in the mid and the dry down. In the opening, it's, it's, very sweet. The cashmere, I mentioned this before. In the opening, it has that fuzziness, that almost white noise kind of characteristic, the way that it fills in um, the depth of the opening of the fragrance. In the mid, that takes a step back as the benzoin, the labdanum, the leather, that little bit of smokiness kind of comes in in the mid. But then in the dry down, after it's been on your skin a couple of hours, that fuzzy nature of the cashmere pokes its head up again. The one Eau de Parfum Intense in the far dry down becomes this semi-sweet, musky, woody cashmere in fragrance to me. It's definitely a modern type of scent. You can tell the way that everything is approached here, that it is made for the modern man. A lot of you out there are not gonna like that, but a lot of you out there will. People that are more against 
the use of these aroma chemicals and new mints releases, you know, your Ambroxan, your Amber Wood, your ISOE Super, your Cashmere Wood, your Cashmere In, which is, I mean, really the same thing. But people that are against that are not going to like this. But people that have kind of embraced that, they've embraced that mass appeal that a lot of these new releases have that are approaching it through or approaching fragrances through highlighting specific aroma chemicals. I imagine we'll dig this. Let's touch really quickly on the performance for the one Eau de Parfum Intense. Is this an intense fragrance in the sense of it being beast mode? Is it gonna fill up a room? Is it gonna choke people out? Is it gonna last 12 hours, 24 hours? No, no, it's not at all. For me, it lasts in the five hour range, maybe six. So that's gonna put this in the slightly below average to average range in terms of longevity. Decidedly not intense. And projection wise, it's actually very good for the first hour, it projects quite well when it's really sweet there in the opening as it heads into the mid. This one pumps off my skin, but after that, it starts to settle in and sit closer and closer and closer to my skin. So overall, in terms of performance, average to slightly below average, yeah. Of course, the one Eau de Toilette and the one Eau de Parfum are not really known for being performance monsters. And the one Eau de Parfum Intense, also not a performance monster. This is the type of fragrance that's going to smell equally good up close and also as you move around. So this is the type of scent that if somebody's right up next to where you sprayed the fragrance and they smell it, it's gonna smell good. It's gonna smell mass appealing, very uh, approachable. Same way if you're moving around or people are moving around you and they pick up your scent trail or your scent cloud. It smells good either way. Some fragrances smell better up close and don't really smell as good in the air and other fragrances smell really good in the air and then if you smell it up close, you're like, ah, that's not that nice. This one though, works both ways. Now in terms of seasons, to me, this is more of a fall time fragrance. That's when I think this is best suited. That being said, you can wear this in winter and I think you can wear it in spring as well. Not really the type of fragrance though that I'd wanna reach for in summer. In high heat, I think especially the opening could come across cloying and it's not really what I'd wanna go for. I'd probably want something that's not quite as sweet, something that's a little bit fresher in summertime. And this one, the one Eau de Parfum Intense, is gonna be better suited for nighttime wear, though I think you could easily pull it off during the day as well, as long as you're wearing it in the correct season. This also comes across to me more of a casual fragrance or a date night kind of fragrance. Not something that I immediately think of as an office fragrance and not something that I immediately think of as a formal fragrance. So to me, more casual and date night. Now, how do I feel about the one Eau de Parfum Intense on the whole? For me personally, I think that I still like the one Eau de Parfum more. If you were gonna put this up side by side with the one Eau de Parfum, I'd rather wear the one Eau de Parfum. This one though is a different take on the one. It doesn't really smell like the one Eau de Toilette or the one Eau de Parfum. It is a fragrance though that has grown on me a good deal. I think it's a very nice fragrance. It's one that is a big potential compliment getter. Again, date night and casual wear during fall and winter especially, and potentially spring as well, this one could be a killer. Is it one that I think you should pay full retail for? I think you should test it first. I think you should go into your local store, grab a bottle, spray it on, give it a wear, see how it works for you. And if you think that it's uh, worth picking up at retail, go for it. I did buy this at retail. Technically, Manny bought it, but then I paid him back, so. But I paid retail for it, and I don't really regret it. Sometimes I do end up regretting it, but this time, I don't. I do wish maybe the sweetness and the opening was toned down a little bit, but that's nitpicking, and my wife loves this one as well, so, I mean, can't complain about that. All that said, though, as I mentioned before, if you're not a fan of 
aroma chemicals being really highlighted, which this one does, in my opinion, with the cashmere in, because it's noticeable in the opening, the mid, and the dry down. The whole life of the fragrance, I can pick it up in this scent. If you're not a fan of that, probably won't be a fan of this one. If you don't mind that, though, and you appreciate fragrances, the new designers going for just all-out mass appeal compliment factor, check this one out. All right, guys, that's going to do it for me with Dolce & Gabbana The One Eau de Parfum Intense. And yeah, I did just kind of give a weird slap. If you've smelled this fragrance, let me know in the comments below what you think about it. As always, thanks so much for hanging out with me today. Thanks for all of your support, and I'll see you guys again tomorrow with another fragrance video. I've gotten that ending down where I can just oh, do it so fast. See you guys.